The Summoning of Every Man, a Medieval Morality Play. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. By craftsmen and mean men these pageants are played, and to commons and countrymen accustomedly before. If better men and finer heads now come, what can be said? The Roll of Messenger, read by Ellie. God, read by Nidu Ayer. Death, read by Dennis Sayers. Every Man, read by Bob Sherman. The Roll of Fellowship, read by Tricia G. The Roll of Kindred, read by David Lawrence. Cousin, read by Chris Caron. Goods, read by Elizabeth Clatt. Good Deeds. Read by Marian Martin. The Roll of Knowledge, read by Ariel Lipshaw. Confession, read by Ruth Golding. The Roll of Beauty, read by Lucy Perry. The Roll of Strength, read by David Cole. Discretion, read by Laurie Ann Walden. The Roll of Five Wits, read by Barry Eads. Angel, read by Colinda. The Roll of Doctor, read by Cory Samuel. Every Man, a moral play, otherwise called, a treatise how the High Father of Heaven sendeth death to summon every creature to come and give account of their lives in this world. Translated from the Dutch play Elke Look. I pray you all give your audience and hear this matter with reverence. The figure a moral play, the summoning of every man called it is, that of our lives and ending shows how transitory we be all day. This matter is wondrous precious, but the intent of it is more gracious and sweet to be away. The story says, Man, in the beginning look well and take good heed to the ending, be you never so gay. Ye think sin in the beginning full sweet, which in the end causes thy soul to weep, when the body lies in clay. Here shall you see how fellowship and jollity, both strength, pleasure, and beauty, will fade from tears a flower in May. For ye shall hear how our heaven king calls every man to a general reckoning. Give audience, and hear what he does say. I perceive here in my majesty how that all creatures be to me unkind living without dread in worldly prosperity. Of ghostly sight the people be so blind, drowned in sin, they know me not for their God. In worldly riches is all their mind, they fear not my right wiseness, the sharp rod. My law that I should, when I for them died, they forget clean, and shedding of my blood red. I hanged between two, it cannot be denied. To get them life I suffered to be dead. I healed their feet, with thorns hurt was my head. I could do no more than I did, truly. And now I see the people do clean forsake me. They use the seven deadly sins damnable, as pride, covetous, wrath, and lechery, now in the world be made commendable. And thus they leave of angels the heavenly company. Every man liveth so after his own pleasure and yet of their life they be nothing sure. I see the more that I them forbear, the worse they be from year to year. All that liveth appeareth fast, therefore I will in all the haste have a reckoning of every man's person, for and I leave the people thus alone in their life and wicked tempests. Verily they will become much worse than beasts. For now one would by envy another upeat, Charity they all do clean forget. I hoped well that every man in my glory would make his mansion, and thereto I had them all elect. But now I see, like traitors deject, they thank me not for the pleasure that I to them meant, nor yet for their being that I them have lent. I proffered the people great multitude of mercy, and few there be that asketh it heartily. They be so cumbered with worldly riches, that needs on them I must do justice, 
on every man living without fear. Where art thou, death, thou mighty messenger? Almighty God, I am here at your will, your commandment to fulfill. Go thou to every man, and show him in my name, a pilgrimage he must on him take, which he in no wise may escape, and that he bring with him a sure reckoning, without delay or any tarrying. Lord, I will in the world go run over all, and cruelly outsearch both great and small. Every man will I beset that liveth beastly out of God's laws, and dreadeth not folly. He that loveth riches I will strike with my dart, his sight to blind, and from heaven to depart, except that alms be his good friend, in hell for to dwell, world without end. Lo, yonder I see every man walking, full little he thinketh of my coming, his mind is on fleshly lusts and his treasure, and great pain it shall cause him to endure before the Lord Heaven King. Every man, stand still. Whither art thou going thus gaily? Hast thou thy maker forget? Why ask'st thou, wouldst thou wit? Yea, sir, I will show you. In great haste I am sent to thee from God out of his majesty. What, sent to me? Yea, certainly. Though thou have forget him here, he thinketh on thee in the heavenly sphere, as, or we depart, thou shalt know. What desireth God of me? That shall I show thee, a reckoning he will needs have, without any longer respite. To give a reckoning longer leisure I crave, this blind matter troubleth my wit. On thee thou must take a long journey, therefore thy book of count with thee thou bring, for turn again thou cannot by no way, and look thou be sure of thy reckoning, for before God thou shalt answer, and show thy many bad deeds, and good but a few, how thou hast spent thy life, and in what wise, before the chief lord of paradise. Have ado that we were in that way, for weet thou well, thou shalt none make attorney. Full unready I am such reckoning to give. I know thee not. What messenger art thou? I am death, that no man dreadeth. For every man I rest, and no man spareth. For it is God's commandment, that all to me should be obedient. O oh, death! Thou comest when I had thee least in mind. In thy power it lieth me to save, Yet of my good will I give thee, if ye will be kind, Yea, a thousand pounds shalt thou have, And defer this matter till another day. Every man, it may not be by no way. I set not by gold, silver, nor riches, Ne by pope, emperor, king, duke, ne princes, for, and I would receive gifts great, all the world I might get, but my custom is clean contrary. I give thee no respite, come hence, and not tarry. Alas, shall I have no longer respite? I may say death giveth no warning. To think on thee it maketh my heart sick, for all unready is my book of reckoning. But twelve year and I might have abiding, my counting book I would make so clear that my reckoning I should not need to fear. Wherefore, death, I pray thee, for God's mercy spare me till I be provided of remedy. Thee availeth not to cry, 
weep and pray, but haste thee lightly that you were gone the journey, and prove thy friends if thou can. For wheat thou well, the tide abideth no man, and in the world each living creature for Adam's sin must die of nature. Death, if I should this pilgrimage take, and my reckoning surely make, show me for St. Charity, should I not come again shortly? No, every man, and thou be once there, thou mayst never more come here, trust me, verily. O oh, gracious God, in the high seat celestial, have mercy on me in this most need. Shall I have no company from this vale terrestrial of mine acquaintance that way me to lead? Yea, if any be so hardy, that would go with thee and bear thee company. Hie thee, that you were gone to God's magnificence, thy reckoning to give before his presence. What? Weenest thou thy life is given thee, and thy worldly goods also? I had went so verily. Nay, nay, it was but lent thee, for as soon as thou art go, another a while shall have it, and then go, therefro, even as thou hast done. Every man, thou art mad, thou hast thy wits five, and here on earth will not amend thy life, for suddenly I do come. O oh, wretched caitiff, whither shall I flee, that I might scape this endless sorrow? Now, gentle death, spare me till to-morrow, that I may amend me with good advisement. Nay, thereto I will not consent, nor no man will I respite, but to the heart. Suddenly I shall smite without any advisement, and now out of thy sight I will thee high. See thou make thee ready shortly, for thou mayst say this is the day that no man living may scape away. Alas, I may well weep with sighs deep. Now I have no manner of company to help me in my journey and me to keep and also my writing is full unready. How shall I do now for to excuse me? I would to God I had never beget. To my soul a full great profit it had be, for now I fear pains huge and great. <sighs> the time passeth. Lord, help that all wrought, for though I mourn it availeth not. The day passeth and is almost a go. I wot not well what for to do. To whom were I best my complaint to make? Hmm, what an I to fellowship thereof spake, And showed him of this sudden chance, For in him is all mine affiance. We have in the world so many a day Been good friends in sport and play. I see him yonder, certainly. I trust that he will bear me company. Therefore to him will I speak to ease my sorrow. Well met, good fellowship, and good morrow. Every man, good morrow by this day. Sir, why lookest thou so piteously? If anything be amiss, I pray thee, me say, that I may help to remedy. Yea, good fellowship, yea, I am in great jeopardy. My true friend, show to me your mind. I will not forsake thee unto my life's end in the way of good company. That was well spoken, and lovingly. Sir, I must needs know your heaviness. I have pity to see you in any distress. If any have you wronged, ye shall revenged be, though I on the ground be slain for thee, though that I know before that I should die. Fairly, fellowship, gramercy. Tush, by thy thanks I set not a straw. Show me your grief and say no more. If I my heart should to you break, and then you to turn your mind from me, and would not me comfort when you hear me speak, then should I ten times sorrier be. Sir, I say as I will do indeed. Then be you a good friend at need. I have found you true here before. And so ye shall evermore, 
for in faith and thou go to hell i will not forsake thee by the way you speak like a good friend i believe you well i shall deserve it and i may i speak of no deserving by this day for he that will say and nothing do is not worthy with good company to go therefore show me the grief of your mind as to your friend most loving and kind i shall show you how it is command that i am to go a journey a long way hard and dangerous and give a straight count without delay before the high judge adonai wherefore i pray you bear me company as you have promised in this journey that is matter indeed promise is duty but and i should take such a voyage on me i know it well it should be to my pain also it make me afeard certain but let us take counsel here as well as we can for your words would fear a strong man why well, you said if i had need you would me never forsake quick nor dead though it were to hell truly so i said certainly but such pleasures be set aside these sooth to say and also if we took such a journey when should we come again nay never again till the day of doom in faith then will not i come there who hath you these tidings brought indeed death was with me here now by god that all hath bought if death were the messenger for no man that is living to-day i will not go that loath journey not for the father that begat me you promised otherwise pardee i wot well i say so truly and yet if thou wilt eat and drink and make good cheer or haunt to women the lusty company i would not forsake you while the day is clear trust me verily yea there too you would be ready to go to mirth solace and play your mind will sooner apply than to bear me company in my long journey now in good faith i will not that way but an thou wilt murder or any man kill in that i will help thee with a good will oh that is a simple advice indeed gentle fellow help me in my necessity we have loved long and now i need and now gentle fellowship remember me whether ye have loved me or no by saint john i will not with thee go yet i pray thee take the labour and do so much for me to bring me forward for saint charity and comfort me till i come without the town nay and thou would give me a new gown i will not afoot with thee go but and you had tarried i would not have left thee so and as now god speed thee in thy journey for from thee i will depart as fast as i may whither away fellowship will you forsake me yea by my fay to god i betake thee farewell good fellowship for this my heart is sore adieu for ever i shall see thee no more in faith every man farewell now at the end for you i will remember that parting is morning alack shall we thus depart indeed our lady help without any more comfort lo fellowship forsaketh me in my most need for help in this world whither shall i resort fellowship here before with me would merry make and now little sorrow for me doth he take it is said in prosperity men friends may find which in adversity be full unkind now whither for succour shall i flee sith that fellowship hath forsaken me to my kinsmen i will truly praying them to help me in my necessity i believe that they will do so for kind will creep where it may not go i will go say for yonder i see them go where be ye now my friends and kinsmen here be we now at your commandment cousin i pray you show us your intent in any wise and not spare yea every man and to us declare if ye did dispose to any whither for weet you well we will live and die together in wealth and woe we will with you hold for over his kin a man may be bold crumb mercy my friends and kinsmen kind now shall i show you the grief of my mind 
I was commanded by a messenger that is an high king's chief officer. He bade me go a pilgrimage to my pain, and I know well I shall never come again. Also I must give a reckoning straight, for I have a great enemy that hath me in wait, which intendeth me for to hinder. What account is that which he must render? That would I know. Of all my works I must show how I have lived and my days spent. Also of ill deeds that I have used in my time since life was me lent, and of all virtues that I have refused. Therefore I pray you, go thither with me to help to make mine account for St. Charity. What, to go thither? Is that the matter? Nay, every man, I had liver, fast bread and water, all this five year and more. Alas, that ever I was bore! For now shall I never be merry if that you forsake me. Ah, sir, what, ye be a merry man? Take good heart to you, and make no moan. But one thing I warn you by St. Anne, as for me, ye shall go alone. My cousin, will you not with me go? No, by Our Lady, I have the cramp in my toe. Trust not to me, for so God me speed. I will deceive you in your most need. It availeth not us to tice. Ye shall have my maid with all my heart. She loveth to go to feasts, there to be nice, and to dance, and abroad to start. I will give her leave to help you in that journey, if that you and she may agree. Now show me the very effect of your mind. Will you go with me, or abide behind? Abide behind? Yea, that I will, and I may. Therefore farewell until another day. How should I be merry or glad, for fair promises to me make, but when I have most need they me forsake? I am deceived, that maketh me sad. Cousin Everyman, farewell now, for verily I will not go with you. Also of my own, an unready reckoning, I have to account, therefore I make tarrying. Now, God keep thee, for now I go. Ah, oh, Jesus, is all come here too? Lo, fair words maketh fools fain. They promise, and nothing will do, certain. My kinsman promised me faithfully for to abide with me steadfastly, and now fast away do they flee. Even so fellowship promised me. What friend were best me of to provide? I lose my time here longer to abide. Yet in my mind... A thing there is. All my life I have loved riches. If that my good now help me might, he would make my heart full light. I will speak to him in this distress. Where art thou, my goods and riches? Who calleth me? Every man, what haste thou hast! I lie here in corners, trussed and piled so high, and in chests I am locked so fast, also sacked in bags, thou mayest see with thine eye I cannot stir, in packs low I lie. What would ye have, lightly me say? Come hither, good, in all the haste thou may, for of counsel I must desire thee. Sir, and ye in the world have trouble or adversity, that can I help you to remedy shortly. It is another disease that grieveth me. In this world it is not, I tell thee so. I am sent for another way to go, to give a straight account general before the highest Jupiter of all. And all my life I have had joy and pleasure in thee. Therefore I pray thee go with me, for peradventure thou mayst before God Almighty my reckoning help to clean and purify, for it is said ever among that money maketh all right that is wrong. Nay, every man, I sing another song. I follow no man in such voyages. For and I went with thee, thou shouldst fare much the worse for me. For because on me thou didst set thy mind, thy reckoning I have made blotted and blind that thine account thou cannot make truly, and that hast thou for the love of me. That would grieve me full sore when I should come to that fearful answer. Up, let us go thither together. 
Nay, not so. I am too brittle. I may not endure. I will follow no man one foot, be ye sure. Alas, I have thee loved, and had great pleasure all my life days on good and treasure. That is to thy damnation without leasing, for my love is contrary to the love everlasting. But if thou had me loved moderately during, as to the poor give part of me, then shouldst thou not in this doler be, nor in this great sorrow and care. Lo, now was I deceived, or I was ware, and all I may weet my spending of time. What, weenest thou that I am thine? I had waned so. Nay, every man, I say no. As for a while I was lent thee, a season thou hast had me in prosperity. My condition is man's soul to kill, if I save one, a thousand I do spill. Weenest thou that I will follow thee? Nay, from this world not verily. I had waned otherwise. Therefore to thy soul good is a thief, for when thou art dead, this is my guise, another to deceive in the same wise as I have done thee, and all to his soul's reprieve. O false good, cursed thou be, thou traitor to God that has deceived me, and caught me in thy snare. Mary, thou brought thyself in care, whereof I am glad, I must needs laugh, I cannot be sad. Ah, oh, good, thou hast had long my heartly love. I gave thee that which should be the Lord's above. But wilt thou not go with me indeed, I pray thee truth to say? No, so God me speed. Therefore farewell, and have good day. Oh, to whom shall I make my moan for to go with me in that heavy journey? First fellowship said he would with me go. His words were very pleasant and gay, but afterward he left me alone. Then spake I to my kinsmen all in despair, and also they gave me words fair. They lacked no fair speaking, but all forsake me in the ending. Then went I to my goods that I loved best, in hope to have comfort, but there had I least, for my goods sharply did me tell that he bringeth many into hell. Then of myself I was ashamed, and so I am worthy to be blamed. Thus may I well myself hate. Of whom shall I now counsel take? I think that I shall never speed till that I go to my good deed. But alas, she is so weak that she can neither go nor speak. Yet will I venture on her now. My good deeds, where be you? Here I lie cold in the ground thy sins had me sore bound that i cannot stir o oh, good deeds i stand in fear i must you pray of counsel for help now should come right well every man i have understanding that ye be summoned account to make before messias of jerusalem king and you do by me that journey what you will i take therefore i come to you my moan to make I pray you that you will go with me. I would, full fain, but I cannot stand, verily. Why? Is there anything on you fall? Yea, sir, I may thank you of all. If ye had perfectly cheered me, your book of account now full ready had be. Look, the books of your works and deeds eke. Oh, see how they lie under the feet to your soul's heaviness. Our Lord Jesus, help me, for one letter here I cannot see. There is a blind reckoning in time of distress. Good deeds, I pray you, help me in this need, or else I am forever damned indeed. Therefore, help me to make reckoning before the Redeemer of all things that King is and was and ever shall. Every man, I am sorry of your fall, and fain would I help you, and I were able. Good deeds, your counsel I pray you give me. That shall I do verily, though that on my feet I may not go, I have a sister that shall with you also, called knowledge, which shall with you abide, to help you to make that dreadful reckoning. Every man, I will go with thee, and be thy guide. 
in thy most need to go by thy side. In good condition I am now in everything, and am wholly content with this good thing. Thanked be God my Creator. And when he hath brought thee there, where thou shalt heal thee of thy smart, then go you with your reckoning and your good deeds together, for to make you joyful at heart before the blessed Trinity. My good deeds, gramercy, I am well content certainly with your words sweet. Now go we together lovingly to confession, that cleansing river. For joy I weep, I would we were there. But I pray you, give me cognition where dwelleth that holy man, confession. In the house of salvation, we shall find him in that place, that shall us comfort by God's grace. Lo, this is confession, kneel down and ask mercy, for he is in good conceit with God Almighty. O glorious fountain, that all uncleanness doth clarify, wash from me the spots of vices unclean, that on me no sin may be seen. I come with knowledge for my redemption, repent with hearty and full contrition, for I am commanded a pilgrimage to take, and great accounts before God to make. Now I pray you, shrift, mother of salvation, help my good deeds for my piteous exclamation. I know your sorrow well, every man. Because with knowledge ye come to me, I will you comfort as well as I can. And a precious jewel I will give thee, called penance, wise voider of adversity. Therewith shall your body chastised be with abstinence and perseverance in God's service. Here shall you receive that scourge of me, which is penance strong, that ye must endure, to remember thy Saviour was scourged for thee with sharp scourges, and suffered it patiently. So must thou, or thou scape that painful pilgrimage. Knowledge, keep him in this voyage, and by that time good deeds will be with thee. But in any wise be sure of mercy, for your time draweth fast, and ye will save it be. Ask God mercy, and he will grant truly. When with the scourge of penance man doth him bind, the oil of forgiveness then shall he find. Thanked be God for his gracious work, for now I will my penance begin. This hath rejoiced and lighted my heart, though the knots be painful and hard within. Every man, look your penance that ye fulfill, what pain that ever it to you be, and knowledge shall give you counsel at will, how your accounts ye shall make clearly. O eternal God, O heavenly figure, O way of righteousness, O goodly vision, which descended down in a virgin pure, because he would every man redeem, which Adam forfeited by his disobedience. O blessed Godhead, elect and high divine, forgive my grievous offence. Here I cry thee mercy in this presence. O ghostly treasure, O ransomer and redeemer of all the world, hope and conductor, mirror of joy, and founder of mercy which illumineth heaven and earth thereby, hear my clamorous complaint, though it late be. Receive my prayers, unworthy in this heavy life though I be, a sinner most abominable, yet let my name be written in Moses' table. O Mary, pray to the Maker of all thing, me for to help at my ending, and save me from the power of my enemy, for death assaileth me strongly. And, Lady, that I may by means of thy prayer of your Son's glory to be partaker, by the means of his passion I it crave, I beseech you, help my soul to save. Knowledge, give me the scourge of penance, my flesh therewith shall give acquittance. I will now begin, if God give me grace. Every man, God give you time and space. Thus I bequeath you in the hands of our Saviour. Thus may you make your reckoning sure. 
In the name of the Holy Trinity, my body sore punished shall be. Take this body for the sin of the flesh. Ah! Oh! Also thou delightest to go gay and fresh, and in the way of damnation thou did me bring. Therefore suffer now strokes and punishing. Ah! Oh! Now of penance I will wade the water clear, to save me from purgatory, that sharp fire. Ah! Oh! I thank God. Now I can walk and go. I am delivered of my sickness and woe. Therefore with every man I will go, and not spare. His good works I will help him to declare. Now, every man, be merry and glad. Your good deeds cometh now, ye may not be sad. Now is your good deeds whole and sound, going upright upon the ground. My heart is light, and shall be evermore. Now will I smite faster than I did before. Ah! Every man, pilgrim, my special friend, Blessed be thou without end, for thee is prepared the eternal glory. Ye have made me whole and sound, therefore I will abide by thee in every stound. Welcome, my good deeds, now I hear thy voice. I weep for very sweetness of love. Be no more sad, but ever rejoice. God seeth thy living in his throne above. Put on this garment to thy behove which is wet with your tears, or else before God you may it miss, when you to your journey's end come shall. Gentle knowledge, what do you would call? It is a garment of sorrow. From pain it will you borrow. Contrition it is, that getteth forgiveness. It pleaseth God passing well. Every man, will you wear it for your heel? Now blessed be Jesu, Mary's son, for now have I on true contrition, and let us go now without tarrying. Good deeds, have we clear our reckoning? Yea, indeed, I have it here. Then I trust we need not fear. Now, friends, let us not part in twain. Nay, every man, that will we not, certain. Yet must thou lead with thee three persons of great might. Who should they be? Discretion and strength they height, and thy beauty may not abide behind. Also ye must call to mind your five wits as for your counsellors. You must have them ready at all hours. How shall I get them hither? You must call them all together, and they will hear you incontinent. My friends, come hither and be present, discretion, strength, my five wits and beauty. Here at your will we be all ready. What will ye that we should do? That ye would with every man go, and help him in his pilgrimage. Advise you, will ye with him or not in that voyage? We will bring him all thither. To his help and comfort ye may believe me. So will we go with him altogether. Almighty God, loved thou be, I give thee laud that I have hither brought strength, discretion, beauty, and five wits, lack I not, and my good deeds, with knowledge clear, all be in my company at my will here. I desire no more to my business. And I, strength, will by you stand in distress, though thou would in battle fight on the ground. And though it were through the world round, we will not depart for sweet nor sour. No more will I unto death's hour, whatsoever thereof befall. Every man, advise you first of all. Go with a good advisement and deliberation. We all give you virtuous monition that all shall be well. My friends, hearken what I will tell. I pray God reward you in his heavenly sphere. Now hearken all that be here. For I will make my testament here before you all present. In alms half my good I will give with my hands twain in the way of charity, with good intent, and the other half still shall remain in quiet, to be returned there it ought to be. This I do in despite of the fiend of hell, to go quite out of his peril ever after and this day. Every man, hearken what I say. Go to priesthood, I you advise, 
and receive of him in any wise the holy sacrament and ointment together. Then shortly see ye turn again hither, we will all abide you here. Yea, every man, high you that ye ready were. There is no emperor, king, duke, ne baron, that of God hath commission, as hath the least priest in the world being. For of the blessed sacraments pure and benign, he beareth the keys, and therefore hath the cure, for man's redemption it is ever sure. Which God for our soul's medicine gave us out of his heart with great pine. Here in this transitory life, for thee and me, the blessed sacraments seven there be. Baptism, confirmation, with priesthood good, and the sacrament of God's precious flesh and blood. Marriage, the holy extreme unction, and penance, these seven be good, to have in remembrance. Gracious sacraments of high divinity. Fain would I receive that holy body, and meekly to my ghostly father I will go. Every man, that is the best that ye can do. God will you to salvation bring, for priesthood exceedeth all other thing. To us holy scripture they do teach, and converteth man from sin heaven to reach. God hath to them more power given, than to any angel that is in heaven. With five words he may consecrate God's body and flesh and blood to make, and handleth his maker between his hands, the priest bindeth and unbindeth all bands. Both in earth and in heaven thou ministers all the sacraments seven. Though we kissed thy feet, thou were worthy. Thou art surgeon that cureth sin deadly. No remedy we find under God, but all only priesthood. Every man, God gave priests that dignity, and setteth them in his stead among us to be. Thus be they above angels in degree. If priests be good, it is so surely. But when Jesus hanged on the cross with great smart, there he gave out of his blessed heart the same sacrament in great torment. He sold them not to us, that Lord Omnipotent. Therefore St. Peter the Apostle doth say, that Jesus' curse hath all they which God their Saviour do buy or sell, or they for any money do take or tell. Sinful priests giveth the sinner's example bad, their children sitteth by other men's fires I have heard, and some haunteth women's company, with unclean life as lusts of lechery these be with sin made blind. I trust to God no such may we find. Therefore let us priesthood honor, and follow their doctrine for our soul's succor. We be their sheep, and they shepherds be, by whom we all be kept in surety. Peace, for yonder I see every man come, which hath made true satisfaction. Methinketh it is he indeed. Now Jesu be our alder speed. I have received the sacrament for my redemption, and then mine extreme unction. Blessed be all they that counseled me to take it. And now, friends, let us go without longer respite. I thank God that ye have tarried so long. Now set each of you on this rod your hand, and shortly follow me. I go before, there I would be. God be our guide. Every man, we will not from you go till ye have gone this voyage long. I, discretion, will bide by you also. And though this pilgrimage be never so strong, I will never part you, Fro. Every man, I will be as sure by thee as ever I did by Judas Maccabee. Alas! I am so faint I may not stand. My limbs under me do fold. <sighs> Friends, let us not turn again to this land, not for all the world's gold. For into this cave must I creep, and turn to the earth, and there to sleep. What? Into this grave? Alas! Yea, there shall you consume more and less. And what? Should I smother here? Yea, by my faith, and never more appear. In this world live no more we shall, but in heaven before the highest Lord of all. I cross out all this. A Jew by St. John. I take my cap in my lap, and am gone. What beauty! Whither will ye? Peace! I am deaf. I look not behind me. Not and thou would give me all the gold in thy chest. 
Alas, where to may I trust? Beauty goeth fast away, hi. She promised with me to live and die. Every man, I will thee also forsake and deny. Thy game liketh me not at all. Why, then, you will forsake me all. Sweet strength, tarry a little space. Nay, sir, by the rood of grace, I will hide me from thee fast, Though thou weep till thy heart brast. Ye would ever bide by me, ye said. Yea, I have you far enough conveyed. Ye be old enough, I understand, Your pilgrimage to take on hand. I repent me that I hither came. Strength, you to displease, I am to blame. Will you break promise that is debt? In faith I care not. Thou art but a fool to complain. You spend your speech and waste your brain. Go thrust thee into the ground. I had when sure I should you have found. He that trusteth in his strength, she him deceiveth at the length. Both strength and beauty forsaketh me, Yet they promised me fair and lovingly. Every man, I will after strength be gone. As for me, I will leave you alone. Why, discretion, will ye forsake me? Yea, in faith I will go from thee, For when strength goeth before, I follow after evermore. Yet I pray thee, for the love of the Trinity, Look in my grave once piteously. Nay, so nigh will I not come. Farewell, every one. Oh, all thing faileth, save God alone. Beauty, strength, and discretion, For when death bloweth his blast, They all run from me full fast. Every man, my leave now of thee I take, I will follow the other, for here I thee forsake. Alas, then may I wail and weep, For I took you for my best friend. I will no longer thee keep. Now farewell, and there an end. O oh, Jesu, help! All hath forsaken me. Nay, every man, I will bide with thee. I will not forsake thee, indeed. Thou shalt find me a good friend at need. Gramercy, good deeds! Now may I true friends see. They have forsaken me every one. I love them better than my good deeds alone. Knowledge, will ye forsake me also? Yea, every man, when ye to death do go, But not yet for no manner of danger. Crumb mercy, knowledge, with all my heart. Nay, yet I will not from hence depart, Till I see where ye shall be come. Methinketh, alas, that I must be gone, To make my reckoning and my debts pay. For I see my time is nigh spent away. Take example, all ye that this do hear or see, How they that I loved best do forsake me, Except my good deeds that bideth truly. All earthly things is but vanity, Beauty, strength, and discretion do man forsake, Foolish friends and kinsmen that fair spake, All fleeth save good deeds, and that am I. Have mercy on me, God most mighty, And stand by me, thou mother and maid, holy Mary. Fear not, I will speak for thee. Here I cry, God, mercy. Short our end, and minish our pain, Let us go, and never come again. Into thy hands, Lord, my soul I commend. Receive it, Lord, that it be not lost. As thou me boughtest, so me defend, And save me from the fiend's boast, That I may appear with that blessed host That shall be saved at the day of doom. In manus tuas of might's most for ever, Commendo spiritum meum. Now hath he suffered that we all shall endure, The good deeds shall make all sure, now hath he made ending. Methinketh that I hear angels sing, And make great joy and melody, Where every man's soul received shall be. Come, excellent elect spouse to Jesu. Here above thou shalt go Because of thy singular virtue. 
Now the soul is taken the body fro, Thy reckoning is crystal clear. Now shalt thou into the heavenly sphere, Unto the which all ye shall come, That liveth well before the day of doom. This moral men may have in mind, Ye hearers, take it of worth, old and young, And forsake pride, for he deceiveth you in the end. And remember beauty, five wits, strength, and discretion, They all at the last do every man forsake. Save his good deeds, there doth he take. But beware, and they be small, Before God he hath no help at all. None excuse may be there for every man. Alas, how shall he do then? For after death amends may no man make, For then mercy and pity do him forsake. If his reckoning be not clear when he do come, God will say, Ite maledicti in ignem eternum. And he that hath his account whole and sound, High in heaven he shall be crowned. Unto which place God bring us all thither, that we may live body and soul together, thereto help the Trinity. Amen, say ye, for Saint Charity. Thus endeth this moral play of every man. This recording is in the public domain.